What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So, today we can talk a bit more about the PlayStation 5 because it seems that there is some sort of special sauce or secret sauce, it's such a weird term, but it was technically talked about uh, by AMD's CEO, so we'll go over that a little bit and what that actually means. And then we did actually hear something from Platinum Games about Bayonetta 3, a game that's pretty much been completely missing since we saw it, kind of, I mean, we saw a little bit at the uh, Game Awards, like, what, years ago at this point? Like, two years ago? So, it's it's been a bit, and finally we got at least something about what's going on with Bayonetta 3. As always, guys, enjoy these videos, make sure you hit the like button, it does help out. We're actually going to start today with Borderlands 3, because we have talked about it uh, quite a bit when it comes to things like the microtransactions that we've heard about, right? That's That aren't microtrans microtransactions, but they are, technically. And, uh, of course, saw some of the gameplay, uh, traversal between planets and stuff. It looked kind of pretty cool. Oh, man, Borderlands 3, it looks like it's going to be really fun. But one thing we didn't really talk about was performance for the, uh, the Xbox One X or the PlayStation 4 Pro, for example. Well, Windows Central actually got a bit more information about that, and it appears that we'll have different modes to pick from, most likely, as it does look like they are targeting 60 frames per second in some capacity on the Xbox One X, although the base platforms will have 30 frames per second. I don't know if they'll hit 4K 60. Most likely we'll get a graphics mode and a performance mode. So, of course, graphics might be native 4K at 30 frames per second or a checkerboarded with the PlayStation 4 Pro thrown in there. And then a probably a 60 frames per second 1080p uh, mode. Most likely is what we're looking at. I personally would probably... Probably lean towards the 60 frames per second, to be honest. With a shooter like that, absolutely. But hey, hopefully it's all set up so we can just pick what we want. We also had an interesting announcement from Intel about their video cards. Now, Intel is, of course, going to be producing GPUs in 2020, seemingly going up against NVIDIA's next-generation GPUs. And it's going to be an interesting battle because then we'll have Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA thrown in there. And AMD has struggled to kind of compete with NVIDIA and, and when it comes to the higher end market. And I actually expect Intel to kind of roll in and hopefully add some competition to the mix for NVIDIA when it comes to the higher end stuff, because NVIDIA is out of control with that right now. Well, it looks like Intel is going to be rolling in with ray tracing at a hardware level. So it's going to be like built in or baked into these video cards that they keep hyping up and talking about. They actually announced it the other day. And here we are now with video cards going into 2020 from Intel that we haven't really seen at all. They've just been hyping it up, kind of here and there dropping hints and little bits about it like we just heard about ray tracing. But the fact that they will be competing at that level is awesome. I really want Intel to show up with good video cards. Like I, I really want them to be good. We don't necessarily need lower end stuff from them because to be honest, right now AMD has that market on lockdown. If you're looking for a budget GPU, you're probably looking for Team Red on that one. You're not really looking for Nvidia because like the 1650 they put out pretty recently isn't that good when you look at something like uh, an RX 570 for example. So I don't I don't think Intel is even looking at that market. I think they want to roll in and hit NVIDIA hard, and I'm hoping they do. Oh, and if you're one of several people who want another Left 4 Dead game, and you saw that trailer that a lot of us saw yesterday that popped up online, it looked like it was an accidental leak of a trailer for Left 4 Dead 3, and it looked very good. It did. Like, a lot of people were looking at that saying, Maybe somebody accidentally uploaded this, it wasn't supposed to be out there, maybe it was supposed to be unlisted or something, or privated, and then they were going to make it go live when it was going to be announced at E3. However, that doesn't seem to be the case, unfortunately, as Valve seems to have confirmed that it is indeed fake. Somebody spent a lot of time making it. It's a good-looking trailer. They really did. I mean, they spent, they spent some time on this thing, so... When I saw it myself, trust me, I was really excited. I was like, finally, Valve is doing something. They're going to make a new Left 4 Dead game. They might still do it, but that trailer, unfortunately, is not telling us about one ahead of E3 in a leak. But we'll keep looking. And guys, some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. We're going to start with the PlayStation 5 right away, as Lisa Sue actually talked with CNBC about the PlayStation 5 and their relationship with Sony. So AMD and Sony, of course, goes well, well back now with the PlayStation 4 having been a tremendous success compared to their PS3, which 
wasn't really. Cell, Nvidia didn't turn out great, lost them a ton of money, but the PlayStation 4, much more straightforward. AMD took care of it, came out real, came out great, actually. I mean, they even managed to jam eight gigabytes of GDDR5 in there that no one expected up until the last minute, it seems, where they snuck that in there and it was massive. It gave them great performance uh, and easier to program for compared to something like the Xbox One that used DDR3 and then some faster ES RAM on board to try to compensate for it. Nope, you just had a straightforward lane with their GDDR5 and the PS4, and it was great. I guess you could technically call that their special sauce, or their secret sauce, although that's just straight up fast memory at the time for video cards. So uh, really, they just did a good job engineering the PS4, and when it came out, it was great for cheaper. So here we are now with Lisa Su talking to CNBC saying, what we have done with Sony is really architect something for their application, for their special sauce. It's a great honor for us. We're really excited about what the next generation PlayStation will do. So you read that quote and it doesn't sound like much was said there. And to be honest, not much was really said there, but it blew up online yesterday. And I think it's because of the wording of what special sauce. Here's the thing. When you hear special sauce, the idea that of that is basically that the chip that they are engineering for the PlayStation 5 will in some way have something special about it. Now that could be a ton of stuff. They could just be changing things around in a known GPU that they're working on behind the scenes to make it more or less fit for something that's much more geared towards visuals in games rather than deep learning or, or who knows what else AMD would be working on in the background with Navi as we really don't have any good test scenarios or, or, or ways to look at that right now. Hopefully by the end of the year we will, ahead of the PlayStation 5. But the idea of special sauce could be something like, just as an example, we heard the rumors that there would be something baked into the PlayStation 5 that would help to work with the PlayStation VR, whether it's the VR currently, because remember that's going to be compatible with it, or the possibility of the PlayStation VR 2 that maybe just has a ton of extra stuff to it and is a much better experience. I think the current headset is going to be compatible with the PS5 because it will in turn be backwards compatible with PS4 games, which will include PlayStation VR games. But the secret sauce or the special sauce thing, it's just a funny word for heavily customizing the chip that's going to be in that PlayStation 5. And that's generally why consoles are set, a, set apart from computers, PCs, for example, that will brute force their way to good visuals, where it's a, it's a more of a nuanced approach, I guess, with a console because you know what's inside the system. But AMD designing a custom Navi chipset with, with Ryzen and everything, and it's going to have an SSD in there on board that developers already know is there. I'm expecting a lot from the PlayStation 5. I think there's gonna be some really cool stuff that happens with this system. And honestly, I'm really excited to see what they get out of it and see what this uh, special sauce actually brings to the table. Next up, let's talk a bit about Anthem very quickly. Anthem is, is kind of a, a dead horse at this point, right? It's been beaten like crazy by everyone. It's Honestly, it's kind of over at this point for Anthem. I know they're going to keep working on it and trying to keep it going, but it sounds like the player base is kind of dwindling and it's just not a lot's happening. Remember, they delayed the roadmap like indefinitely at this point. So I don't have a lot of hope for Anthem at this point. And it seems like a lot of the leads who work to design Anthem and get it off the ground and everything have moved on. And they've moved on to Dragon Age, which... Yeah, okay, cool. Let's let's do Dragon Age at this point. Let's move on to what Dragon Age 4, I guess is what we're calling it at this point, because there's just not a lot left with Anthem. And you're going to see this really fly around the internet a lot saying that Anthem has been pushed off to kind of a, a supportive studio at this point that's basically going to maintain and I guess continue the roadmap going forward. And to be honest, that is a common practice. That's not like crazy. It's not out of nowhere. It, it really isn't. The leads that were working on uh, Anthem designing from the ground up should have moved over to, to Dragon Age at this point because that's the next big project. They just work on big projects. It's not really their job to sit around and work on a live service game. Basically to them, they worked on the game, shipped it, and now they're on to the next project, which is, which is Dragon Age, that I hope, hope, hope turns out much better than Anthem because Anthem is now just being held up by a studio that is essentially just working forward on the live service thing. And until Anthem completely collapses, that's probably what they'll just keep doing and hopefully the roadmap is back on track soonish and they can actually start working forward with Anthem. But I'm telling you, I, I just don't have a lot of confidence in that anymore. I think here soon, just not enough people will be playing it. Live services need engagement. If there's no engagement, technically it's not even a live service at that point. It's just a, it's 
just an empty ghost town for a, for a game. I mean, technically it's a live service, but it's, you need people to be there for it to work. So they're already having matchmaking problems. And I just don't think Anthem's gonna be around much longer, but that's basically what's happening there. The leads have moved on and they have now have a studio that's just kind of supporting, holding it up and working towards that roadmap. Next up, let's talk about Bloodstained Ritual of the Night because they put out a release date trailer and man, they did some work to this thing. Seriously, when they put the trailer out and they did the old versus new and they showed all the comments of people saying, it doesn't look that great. It looks like a mobile game. It, it, the visuals are rough. It's just an overall rough feeling game when you're playing it. It doesn't look good. And then they started changing from old to new and wow, this, I am so happy they changed this thing up because this thing looks amazing now. I am ready for this and and we don't have to wait much longer. It's coming out next month. It's in June. They gave us exact release dates. So there will be kind of a staggered release date. June 18th is when the Xbox One, the PC, and the PlayStation 4 version will come out. Now the PC will launch Steam and GOG side by side. And then on uh, June 25th, the Nintendo Switch version will release, so you can either pick up the other versions or then a week later grab the Switch version. Or It depends on your Kickstarter, of course, as well. If you've bought it in the Kickstarter, you'll have already probably picked which one you're getting anyway. But I'm looking at this, honestly, I might grab it on the Xbox, and then I might also grab it on the Switch, because there is apparently a frame rate difference between them and everything, and... I wish they had cross progression. So like if you play on the Xbox One version at home and then you move on to the Switch, I wish you could like move them back and forth. Kind of like what we talked about with Civilization doing that. That would be really cool. If that's something they could make work, I'd be all for that. But this is of course, basically Symphony of the Night. A game a lot of us loved, right? And I like the way they did the trailer. Great, great work with that thing. And it's, it's gonna be awesome. So yeah. I'm in on this day one, probably on two different platforms, uh, but June is looking good. We got that, we got Mario Maker, and then into July, and then into August, of course. Things are gonna start getting a little ridiculous here in the last six or seven months of the year, and I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to kicking off with something like Bloodstained. And our last bit of news, let's talk about Platinum Games, because they actually talked about Bayonetta 3. We had a Bayonetta 3 sighting somewhat. They at least mentioned what's going on, because there's been a lot of confusion, a lot of concern around Bayonetta 3. I mean, did we see that cinematic trailer when they literally pinned everything up on the whiteboard in the back, you know, wrote everything down, got the corkboard out and everything, and they're like, all right, let's make Bayonetta 3. First, we're gonna make the cinematic trailer, then we'll get to work on it, because that's what it's felt like, because we haven't really seen anything since then. Well, we got something here, which is which is great. After they, uh, they sat down, we have video games, uh, VGC, Video Game Chronicles, at Osaka, Japan, actually talked to Atsushi Inaba all about Platinum Games, because they have a lot of stuff they would like to do. Now, the first thing about Bayonetta 3 is they will see a change in design process, and that's based on Platinum's experience creating the first two games. And it says the firm is midway through creating an unannounced title, which he also claims has never been done before. So there's a lot of stuff going on in Platinum Games right now. I mean, seriously, it seems like they're working beyond what they should be capable of because they're also talking about trying to develop some IPs in-house because right now they're basically hired by companies like Nintendo for Astral Chain, but they don't actually get to keep the rights to Astral Chain. That's Nintendo's. Nintendo is basically has Astral Chains and then they bring in Platinum Games and say, hey, would you like to work on Astral Chain, get that done for us and we'll put your name on it and everything and you'll get money from it. And they say yes because it's money and it helps them hold up their studio. It gives them a project to work on. But the idea here is they would like to work on several games. And they say they have two right now that are just completely unannounced. And the idea here is they develop them in-house. Then they can control things like sequels, for example. That's the biggest thing in creative control. And of course, timelines for it because they don't have to report to people like Nintendo. Or, or I guess they're doing one with Square for, as well. But they don't have to report to them about how things are going. And then the other thing about that is Bayonetta 3 having a, a bit of a change in its design process. And that could mean a couple things. Could mean logistically how they how they are working on it, you know, what their what their storyboarding is compared to like what their what their actual design in the game is and everything. Most likely, I'm thinking the structure of the game could be slightly different from other Bayonetta games. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I mean, they could change up the way that it kind of looks, they could change up the engine. It just, it sounds like Bayonetta 3 is a very large project. I think bigger than a lot of us are expecting it to be. I think most of us are expecting to just show up and it look exactly like 1 and 2. The, the idea, not, you know, exactly the same, but the same idea. It could be similar idea, but different as well. So maybe this is just a much larger in scope Bayonetta game. And that's why it's taking longer and why the design process is described as being changed. 
Either way, Platinum Games is becoming much larger now, and it's exciting to see what they come up with with games they just they just come up with in-house because they already have some crazy ideas for stuff and some of their execution is very, very good. So I would love to see what they can come up with like fully on their own with their own inspirations. It'd be really cool. And as for comment of the day, this one actually comes to us from Tizzy13 saying, I see where he's coming from. People didn't really call the skins for uh, Borderlands 2 microtransactions. They just felt like DLC. Skins have become more common now, more associated with microtransactions. So Randy just being an idiot, not with the times. He's probably thinking of microtransactions like Fortnite, where you buy currency and then buy stuff with said currency from item shop. I imagine it'll be more like Borderlands 2, where you just bought skins right off the PlayStation Network, etc. store page. So yeah, here's the thing about Randy. I, I, I think he had in his mind what a microtransaction was. And I think he's thinking of buying premium currency and all kinds of other stuff, reticules for Call of Duty. And, uh, and I think he's in more or less thinking, well, it's going to be like Borderlands 2, where we have skins that you buy from a store page. You don't go into the game, buy currency, take that currency, and then buy other stuff in the game, no loot box or anything. But I still look at it as microtransactions, not DLC. I think that's what he's trying to label the stuff as, downloadable content that you buy, not necessarily small things that are like a dollar for a skin or something. That's still, I think that's a microtransaction, not necessarily. Okay, so like if they released, let's say, a big piece of downloadable content, and it's like 20 bucks, and it's like new story, new new planet, for example, you traverse to, and it comes with skins, then I don't see it as a microtransaction, but if you buy each individual skin for a dollar, I think that's a microtransaction. But again, we're basically just arguing terminology. It's, it's all just things that cost money beyond the $60 price tag, right? So we'll just go with that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go do it here for News Wave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it's the PlayStation 5 special sauce. What do you think they are referring to? Is it something with VR or is it something to help with ray tracing? Is it something to help with uh, visuals or resolution on screen? I'm curious what you think that would be. And then what's going on with Bayonetta 3? They're, they're altering or changing the design process from previous ones. What are they talking about? Just the way that they're creating it, the engine, uh, the gameplay, visuals. I don't know. Let me, let me know what you guys think though down below. Also guys, have a great weekend. Make sure you stop by Spawncast 9 p.m. Eastern time Saturday night and I'll see you Monday for Newswave.